Is Kid Rock racist? Also, is that a stupid question or a really stupid question? Next. What's poppin'? It's your boy Mike Powers. Thank you for clicking the video. Once again, like, comment, share, subscribe if that's something that you want to do. Uh, Y'all been really responding really well to the reactions. I'm gonna have some announcements coming up about the reactions because YouTube is making it real tough out here. Of course, I told you I was gonna bring you back another Mike Powers show, and this is that right here. Why every three months, Ted Nugent or Kid Rock? pop up on some racism shit or some sexism shit or can't stand all the lefty shit. Kid Rock popped off again in this drunken rant at, I, I guess, a bar that he owns in Michigan. I don't like Oprah Winfrey or Joy Behar. I think it's some thick sideways. So he told Oprah to give him a Lewinsky. First of all, this dude couldn't shine Oprah's shoes. Let's be real. We talk about a woman who is probably the biggest media personality and the greatest rags to riches story in the history of America. Uh, a, a young dark skinned black woman goes on to helm the biggest media empire of all time and become a black female billionaire in the process. And here come Kid Rock wanting to talk some more shit. Now, nobody's perfect. Oprah has had some problems in the past and whatnot, but you got Kid Rock coming along trying to take shots at the queen when she's done more in the last five years to help people than he's done in his whole life. This ain't the first time that Kid Rock is talk greasy and reckless about people and women. You know, he said some things about Hillary Clinton that wasn't too flattering. He hangs out with Ted Nugent, who wants to stick a AK-47 or something like that in Hillary's mouth. And he called Ted Nugent, I'm talking about, called Barack Obama a, a subhuman mongrel. And this is the dude you hang out with. You're doing shows out here with the Confederate flag, and but you got your start in music through hip hop with some garbage, but you was trying to do some hip hop. The rock shit wasn't working out for you. And you came into Detroit and tried to get some love for the, from the brothers. You played that wigger role. And that's what a lot of people do time and time again. People will come into our culture, whether it be uh, hip hop or R and B and use us as their entryway <laughs> into the game and then completely abandon us. We've had, Plenty of people doing that. Christina Aguilera did it. Remember this, Christina? Don't forget Justin Timberlake. Let's 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 talk about this. In Sync was definitely inspired by New Edition, just like New Kids on the Block was. But remember when Justin went solo and he was really trying hard to be black? And of course, Pink started out her career the exact same way, catering to the urban audience before switching it up. So this is not a new phenomenon. It's been going on since the beginning of time. It's going to continue. The shit got getting so crazy out here. You even got these, um, what you call them? These K-pop groups doing it. Um, Korean pop acts, which to me is they're trying to be a direct rip off of urban culture. But again, white folks love to see and hear black stuff, but they don't like to see it and hear it from black people. Right. So wrap your head around that. They, you know, all those hits that Justin Timberlake made with Timberland. If uh, let's say a guy like Tyrese would have made him, you think he would have blown up to be an international superstar on the same level as Justin Timberlake? No. So, you know, this, this has a lot to do with the, with the white rappers too. Some of these white rappers are all right. They're pretty good. Eminem is really, really good. But a lot of people that listen to Eminem don't even listen to any other lyricists. Why? Because they want to see that white guy do it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but don't tell me you're a rap fan. And that's why you listen to Eminem, but you can't name any other rappers that you listen to. And you damn sure can't name no other lyricists that you listen to. So when you look at a group like this K-pop group, these guys didn't grow up 
listening to R&B music or admiring Teddy Pendergrass or Luther Vandross or even Donnell Jones or 112, Jodeci, Jagged Edge or any shit like that. That our shit just look good. We look good doing those moves. And now y'all want to do those moves. Y'all don't hang out with us. Y'all don't rep for the culture. Y'all don't go on no marches or no protests. Y'all are not really involved with us. Y'all taking the parts of us that you like and you're leaving the rest in the dustbin and kid rock has finally decided to show his true colors. I mean, this ain't the first time he's been doing this, right? But you're going to take a shot at the queen. So why Oprah? Why, why would you just out of nowhere bring up Oprah in that vulgar fashion? Why would you do that? What did Oprah do? Answer is nothing. This is the psychology of racist white people, not all white people, racist white people. This is their mentality. Let me break this down. What did Oprah do? She did nothing. Why attack Oprah? Because in your mind, you see Oprah. I'm talking about the racist mindset. This racist sees Oprah as a symbol of black accomplishment. And so anything that that person accomplishes needs to be diminished. He needs to vocalize his discontent with Oprah Winfrey or any other African-American who rises to a certain level of prominence. They did the same thing to Barack Obama. This is what racists will do, right? Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. Okay. Anybody that's African-American that reaches a certain level, anybody that black folk admire, they will try to tear that person down. So Oprah is representative of any black person. She's not special for being called out by Kid Rock. She just happened to be a successful black person that popped into his head when he wanted to talk shit about black people. So all that was now who they like Oprah, fuck Oprah. No, fuck you, Kid Rock kiss my ass or I should say Robert Ritchie. That's the boy's real name, Robert fucking Ritchie. And he tried to cover up in the, in the past, his racist tendencies. And somebody called him to the carpet and he said, I love black people. All right. So let's take that statement. I love black people. And he was at a concert where he went on a tirade at one point and talked about, you know, liberal politicians and whatnot, but also decided to call out the, the Nazis and the KKK he said, listen, stay the fuck away from my shows, Nazi and KKK. Okay. So that's, that's laudable, right? Except I don't believe he really believes stay the fuck away from me. If you KKK, here's why. Because when you got so much bad shit to say about black people or liberal politicians, you can go on for hours, just stand up there going and going and going. But when you tell Nazis and KKK to stay away, to, to stay away, don't come to my show. You don't say shit else. You're not up there saying, listen, everybody's created equal. You're not saying I got my start in music. Uh, because of the black people in Detroit, because of the black people in the hip hop community, you're not calling out the racist acts that are taking place in a place like Charlottesville and saying, we got to stop this. That's bullshit. You're not on the front lines marching with somebody. You're not standing up for the cause. When Are you there when an unarmed black person in Detroit gets shot by the cops? Where are you at? So no, I don't believe him when he says KKK, neo-Nazi, stay away from my concert. He's just saying that to cover your ass and it's not going to work. A lot of us are savvy and we understand that you're just using that as a talking point. So other white racist folks can say, no, he's not racist. Look, he told the KKK to get away. I'm not falling for this shit. Once again, Robert Ritchie, fuck you. Now this one is bubbling up in the news right now. I'm sure they're going to try to brush it up under the rug, but apparently Gabrielle Union was fired from America's Got Talent supposedly because she was speaking out against the racism that was going on behind the scenes on the show and, and some sexism. Some reports are that there was some racial jokes that was going around. And she was also told that her hair was too black. To, they wanted her to change her hairstyle. Her hairstyle was too black. It's 2019 and we still doing this. Move this mic closer to my mouth real quick. It's 2019 and we still doing this. Talk about people's hair being too black. So she got fired apparently from the show. There's other reports that she quit. I don't know, but something interesting is going on at America's Got Talent. You remember uh, Nick Cannon was there and Nick Cannon left amid some small controversy. Um, who? Oh, Mel B was there. Heidi Klum was there. She's gone. Oh. 
I should also say uh, Julianne Huff was also fired or her contract was not renewed. Listen, sexism is bad and all that, but I'm not about to cape for Julianne Huff in this situation simply because of this. Remember this shit right here? Blackface, bitch. So nah, <laughs> good riddance. <laughs> Good riddance to Julia Huff. This ain't about you. This is about Gabrielle Union. So complaints about racism. All of a sudden she's let go. You had Nick there. You had Mel B there. You had other women there. What they're saying is that the guys get to stay no matter how ugly they are. This is what Howard Stern said, by the way. Howard Stern said, no matter how ugly you are, if you're a guy or no matter how, how unpopular you are, unfunny or whatever the case may be, you get to stay. But if you're a bad chick, they replace you for another bad chick. Excuse my language. I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion, but they change you out for a younger, quote unquote, hotter version of yourself and it seems that that's the trend on america's got talent gabrielle union has decided to speak out about that in, in some small way she's not going on a tirade she ain't took off the earrings and kicked off the heels yet but i think everybody could tell in the social media world that she feels a particular kind of way so what the fuck is going on over at america's got talent listen Simon Cowell, first of all, that whole British asshole yelling at people shit, that Gordon Ramsay type, that's played out, first of all. So why is this dude even still on the show? And how much control does he have over that show? I don't I don't read the fucking credits, uh, so I don't know. But I do know that, well, I don't know this, but I have heard that Gabrielle Union was bringing social media presence back to the show. like social media really wasn't engaged with America's Got Talent. But when Gabrielle Union came on board and you could see why she's a extremely talented, popular young actress doing her thing out here, very positive vibe. She seems to always put out. Uh, so I can see why the social media following would, would grow as it relates to that show. But then they got rid of her. And I was watching a clip of the, sh of, a, of another show. It's called the real shout to the real. I don't watch it, but uh, I believe it was Lonnie Love that said, well, Terry Crews is on the show. Should he take a stand against all of the shit that's going on? Well, you got to understand, I think Terry came in after Nick. So that'd be like a black man coming in, playing starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers after they get rid of Kaepernick, which, okay, they didn't really get rid of Kaepernick. He didn't accept their measly ass fucking contract, but we know what's really going on, right? And should Terry Crews stand up for Gabrielle Union? Has he heard some of these racist jokes? Has he been around when these women have been degraded and he is not saying anything? Should he? Listen, Terry Crews is in full... 12 years of slave mode. You got to understand Terry Crews has been playing this Me Too movement car for a long time now. So this Terry Crews is a dude who said a white man, a little white man, grabbed him by the genitals while Terry Crews was standing right next to his wife. Terry Crews and his wife standing there. White guy comes up, powerful Hollywood guy, and grabs him by the balls. And I don't think he's even ever named this guy. But his reaction, when it happened, he did nothing about it. He did not put hands on this dude that grabbed him by the junk. <laughs> and I know some people are going to say, listen, this is what I, I understand to an extent why Terry may not have wanted to cause a problem. And there was a lot of tough guys out there to say, I would have did this. I would have did that. That's fine. I respect it. I'm just saying when you're in that position, you're in the Hollywood Hills, you're in a $14 million house, and your job is standing right over there. All you got to do is go over and talk to that guy. Wait till he get a couple more drinks in him and go holla at boy. And you could make your dreams come true. You could bring home hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for your family. Still, bro. And I'm hesitant to even say anything fucked up about Terry Crew because that's a big dude. He's a big dude. But if you can't whoop on the guy, a little white dude who grabbed you by the balls, then you damn sure better not lay a finger on me. Now, again, some people are speculating that Gabrielle Union actually quit the show and she wasn't fired. But 
Lonnie Love had a very interesting take on that. He was getting paid a lot. 12, allegedly 12 million. 12 million. 12 million. 12 million. So she yeah. wouldn't quit that That's job. A it's a reason. Yeah. It's a reason why she quit that. Think about it. That shit makes sense. I'm riding with Gabby on this one. D Wade, shout out. Know what I mean? Y'all doing her girl wrong. And let's hope that she bounces back something strong because she's far too talented to be done the way she was done in this particular instance. And fuck America's Got Talent. I'll be watching that corny ass shit anyway. No, nah, that's not my uncle. That's Dame Dash on the screen. Dame Dash, what is Dame Dash in the news for now? He got arrested. Let me just start by saying that I'm a Dame Dash fan. Flat the fuck out. I'm team Dame. Whoever don't rock with him, fuck him. But on this one, and we're not even gonna talk about him. Did he get arrested on a warrant because of child support? I'm not about to go into this man's personal business. I don't know what's going on with, with the cheering and the money and the ex. I don't know. I do know that sometimes when a brother is down, it's just like that woman that was closest to him to kick him. I'm just saying, sometimes it happens. This situation I think has nothing to do with child support. So let's go on to why did Dame Dash go the fuck off? Uh, apparently it was a deposition about a movie deal, a movie deal that went bad. And Dame is letting this uh, apparently African-American lawyer that's sitting on the other side of the table, letting him have it with both barrels. Dame, is everybody a culture vulture? Like, I rock with Dame. I... I feel bad for what happened with the whole Rockefeller thing. I feel bad. I don't give a fuck that y'all like, oh, he was doing too much flash and all up in the video dance. I'm not, I don't care nothing about that. Half of y'all watching this video, try to shine as much as you can every goddamn chance you get. Don't get mad at this man. I mean, you're not mad at Jay. Jay be flossing and flashing too. Why you think Dame shouldn't do the same thing? Dame was there with him and Biggs. He helped create the shit. He, he, could, he got a great ear. He was the one that wanted to rock with Kanye. Before Jay was fucking with Kanye, it was it was it was Dame put him up under the wing. Kanye turned on Dame. Kanye. So I rocks with Dame Dash, but Dame, God damn, you gotta fall back. You gotta fall back. You gotta let your. <laughs> I mean, so many shit that went on in this video was funny. Believe me, and that shit's funny, but. Let your lawyer do the job. Every time I see you on camera, it can't be you just snapping on somebody. <laughs> this this African American lawyer that you dogging is doing his job, bro. He gets paid to do a job. He was hired by somebody. I don't know who hired him. I don't know. I don't know who you beefing with. But somebody hired him, brought him in there to do a job, and he got to depose you. So he's there to ask. Just be like, okay, you answer the questions. Be short with the questions. Why you got to go all up in this man's shit? Calling him a culture vulture. And, and disrespecting this man. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking now. Okay. The testimony is reflected in the Culture transcript. Bullshit. The accurate testimony. Disgusting okay. with your son. And to the Black extent like that there is something that reflects that, people. that haven't been produced, we will produce that. Do you frequently make mistakes, Mr. Always. Yeah, yeah, I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm human, mm -hmm. so that's not going to go anywhere in court. <laughs> Do you make mistakes? I just got him there. He made a mistake. Scared. Look at you all mumbly. Look at you Dame, jittery. Dame, Look at you jittery. Dame, Dame. Ridiculous. No, no, no. no, no. This is Dame, ridiculous. Dame, please, we gotta the finish client the client is unruly. I, I, He's answering the phone. Come on. The witness we is need here. To, she's talking. Dame, I feel it. You're gonna make a comeback. And I'm being very careful about what I say about Dame Dash. And I'm even being careful about this picture. <laughs> that I put up right here. I'm very careful about the images. I was searching for images on Google and I wanted to choose the right one because I don't need to smoke with when that dude gets a microphone and a camera in front of him and you the target. That's a problem. And who knows if it, all of the shit he might say is true or not. It's just fire. And I know a bunch of people going to watch it because this shit is entertaining. I get entertained every time I watch Dame Dash, but Dame, let's not don't be our entertainment bro go out there and kill this fucking game the way you know you can go out and find the next currency find the next jasmine sullivan find the next b2k and put them out like if i wanted to do this shit i could do it i got good ears i can go i don't i'm not i'm i've been there i don't fuck with that <laughs> 
I don't want to manage and produce for artists, but that's what you do. You in the multimedia space, go find you some talent and bring them from the ground up and make them superstars. Show these motherfuckers, Dame. But let's not do this on video no more. I know, Dame. Oh, I don't give a fuck. They can say whatever. I know you don't give a fuck. That's a, a somewhat of an endearing quality about you. But you gotta find a way to make these dudes with the money want to fucking work with you. And if you're saying. I'm my own boss. I don't gotta fuck with these dudes no more. Fine, then do that. But do that. Dame, cause I'm rocking with you. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> I want you to win. And you better believe if Dame see this fucking video. <laughs> he gonna say, that nigga Mike Powers is a culture vulture. He don't know me. <laughs> And Dave, you grew up playing the fucking dozens. These are jokes. So rock with it. But that's going to do it for my show today. If you like what I'm putting out, please hit the thumbs up. How corny is this when people do that? But I'm getting coached from certain people. You know, I'm studying the craft. They say, put a thumbs up. Okay, slap the thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, and be looking out for me twice a week because I'm dropping consistent heat on this platform. Mike Powers, I'm out. Thank you